Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. My name is David Clark, and this is My Old Sled, the channel where we talk about all things snowmobiling. So if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you know that we usually talk about snowmobiles. I've started to do a little bit of stuff on the ATV lately, and that's actually what I'm going to do today. So we started to get a little bit of snow. I'm hoping I'm going to be out riding soon, and I do have a couple of snowmobile videos lined up. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about getting rid of some of this snow. So I'm going to show you the plow that I bought for my ATV. And as always, I'm going to give you a few tips along the way. But since we are a snowmobile channel, I'm also going to answer a viewer question that is related to snowmobiles, and I'm going to get to both of those things right after the intro. So my first question is from one of my subscribers, GP Outdoors. So he does not have a shed and he typically stores his snowmobile just sitting on the ground with a cover over it. Uh, he's heard that you shouldn't leave it sitting flat on the ground with the track on the ground and he's asking me if that's true. So GP, that's a, a great question. You know, a lot of guys will do what you do. They just leave the sled sitting on the ground with a, a cover over it. And it, I mean, it's not going to be disastrous. And actually, I did do another video on whether you should use a snowmobile lift. Uh, and I talked to a bunch of dealers um, when I was doing that video. And it kind of comes down to personal preference. But if you're asking me my opinion, I think that you should lift the snowmobile off the ground whenever you're not using it. If you've ever had a flat tire sitting in one place for a while, you know what happens to rubber when it's sitting on something. Uh, so you get it up off the ground. Now, the track is pretty tough and so are the lugs it's probably not going to deform a lot uh, if you get that back end of the sled up off the ground you're taking the strain off the rear suspension and when you're warming the sled up uh, if you make sure it's completely clear you can actually spin the track as well and get the ice and things like that off of it so yeah you know there's a lot of different ways that you can lift your sled there's some really inexpensive lifts i mean the one i got was not a lot of money you know, if you don't have a, a proper sled lift, just get a two by four and cut it long enough, maybe put a little bit of groove in it and just lift the back end and put it on that. You know, you can make a base for it. This, that's easily done. But yeah, in my opinion, I think that you should lift the back end when you're storing it. So thanks, GP. Great question. And just by the way, guys, if you haven't checked out GP Outdoors, he's got a channel of his own. He does a lot of really cool sort of outdoor stuff. He's, he's got some nice tool uh, toys, rather. He's got, uh, you know, he does stuff on tractors and log splitters and uh, shredders and just a lot of different outdoor stuff. And he's another fellow, I think he's in Ontario as well. So GP Outdoors, thank you very much for the question. So I live up on the Bruce Peninsula, so that's right between Georgian Bay and Lake Huron uh, in Ontario, Canada. We get a lot of snow. I also live on an unassumed road, so that means they don't clear it. So if I want to get out of here in the winter, I need to clear this myself. So it's a fairly good stretch that I need to keep clear. Most of the time I've used a snowblower. Actually, I don't mind that. I mean, it took me like an hour and a half to clear all my snow. Just kind of mindless. I, I love blowing snow, but uh, I wanted something a little bit quicker, a little bit easier on days I don't feel like being out here that long. So I did get this pl uh, plow for the ATV. It is a Moose Utilities 50 inch plow. So which plow you should get is a great place to start. And if you don't have an ATV, you know, thinking a little bit about which ATV you want as well. Um, so this is a Honda Rancher. It's a 400. It was made in the great state of South Carolina. Um, 400, I wouldn't want to go a whole lot smaller than that for plow and snow. Some guys are going to have different opinions on that. Um, so yeah, I think it's plenty. The one thing you need to remember though is the size of the plow that you get. So there are a ton of different plows out there, different sizes, different configurations. You can get straight blades like this one or V-shaped blades. Um, kind of the rule of thumb though is if you have a 450 or smaller, you want a 50 inch blade. Most of these straight blades are 50 or 60 inches. Um, so yeah, the advice is if you've got less than a 450, then you should have a 50 inch blade and anything bigger, you can go up to a 60. You know, you need to remember that plowing snow puts an additional load on your machine and obviously it's going to increase wear and tear. You know, a bigger blade is going to weigh more, um, but it's also going to push more, right? So you're going to have a lot more load on the machine. So that's why it's important that you buy the right size. Yeah, so I'm really happy with this Honda Rancher. I mean, it's not the biggest, heavy-dutiest one for work, and it's not the fastest one I've ever ridden. Um, but it's a really nice sort of middle-of-the-road sport utility kind of thing. I can go out and ride on it for the day and just have fun with it. can do a little bit of work with it as well. You don't want to tow a ton of weight behind it. But you can throw a trailer and go cut some trees down, clear some brush, that kind of thing. Or, you know, like we're doing in this video, plowing some snow. So, yeah, it's a really nice sort of all-around machine. All right, so in terms of mounting and setup, it's super easy. There's a mounting plate that goes onto your frame on the bottom of the ATV that gives you two attachment points for the plow. That's like a couple of U-bolts. It's really easy to put on. Once that's mounted, mounting the plow is super easy. I can do it by myself in about five minutes with no tools. Yeah, so basically I just lay the plow flat down on the ground. I'll drive the ATV over it, get it kind of close to the right place, and then you've got those two attachment points underneath. Basically, the mounting arms on the blade are long enough that you've got enough leverage to turn that plow fairly easily from underneath. I'll just sort of wiggle it back and forth till I get the holes to line up, pop in the locking pins, and that part of it's done. 
All right, once those two attachments are, are hooked up and you're uh, mounted to your frame, the third point of attachment and the last step is hooking your winch cable to the plow. Um, now, this actually is not the right way to do it. I've got the winch cable directly onto my plow, and it does work, so now I can lift the front of the plow up and down while I'm, while I'm working. Um, but all of the weight of this plow, when it's in the air, is on that winch cable. And that's really not ideal. What you want to do, there's a couple of kits available, or you can just go and buy a pulley. That's what my neighbor did with his machine. Um, but basically, by putting that winch cable through a pulley and then back up to the machine, uh, you're spreading the load out. So... If you guys watched my nifty lift video, that's about a small portable block and tackle. And it's kind of the same idea. When you take that work and you spread it out over a longer distance with a pulley, you're putting less strain. You're actually doing less, uh, putting out less effort to do the same amount of work. So that's really the correct way to do that. And I am going to add one of those kits to this machine. So if you're pushing a lot of snow or heavier snow, you might want to angle this blade so it'll roll off to the side. This one is just this manual release here. I'll pull that down and then I can turn this blade to the setting that I want. All right, so when we're all ready and we're all mounted, then I'll start plowing. And uh, yeah, so basically I'll put it into four wheel drive. I'll use a nice, slow, steady speed to plow. Um, so usually I'll put the blade um, all the way down. I've got spacers on the blade so it won't sort of dig right in to the ground. Once the ground's really frozen and we got a good base, I don't worry about it too much anyway. Um, depending on where I'm plowing, if it's a really rough pothole surface. So these are just gravel roads. Um, so if it's really uneven and, and pitted, then I might leave the blade up just a little bit for plowing. Uh, but yeah, once we get a, a good packed base down and the ground's good and frozen, I'll just put the blade right down. Um, usually I'll angle the blade and I'll start with a pass down the middle, and then I'll come back on one side and, and back down on the other. Okay, and when you're finished plowing, you want to return that. You want to put that plow back onto the ground so you've taken the weight off your winch and your cable. So my next tip, and actually this is just as applicable with a snowblower, I've learned this the hard way a few times. Um, when you're done uh, using the plow for the day, make sure you take a second and just clean everything off. I usually just keep a little snow brush uh, in the tent and I knock, same thing with the snowmobile, same thing with the snowblower. Um, just knock all of the, the snow that you can off of any of it. So yeah, like this lever here for turning the blade and things like that. Uh, if you don't take the time and clean that off, it's gonna freeze solid during the night and then you're gonna have a bit of a headache in the morning. All right guys, so that's it. That's uh, my snow plow for my ATV from Moose Utilities. I hope you found that useful if you've been thinking about buying one yourself. Uh, that's also it for another video. So if you like that video, do me a favor and click the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're into snowmobiling, you're into ATVs, take a second, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll get a message whenever I post a new video. All right, GP Outdoors, thanks for the question. Until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I've got the cargo container on the back. I can throw my light. <laughs> Trees are melting. Yes. Yeah, so and as always, I got a few tips and tricks. <clears throat> Next tip I'll have.